Uh, Sam, first of all, debate going on about VAR. Yes. Is it fit for purpose to introduce in the World Cup? Would it be fit for purpose to start the season off next season in the Premier League? It's not, it's not, well, um, I've heard a lot of opinions about VAR, and I think that at the moment we 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 just have, it's just not right at the moment in terms of its usage. I don't think the technology's uh, the problem. I just think it's how it's being used at the moment, and I think that is the the overall problem. I think I was listening to a, a rugby re- referee who was, who was saying it's it's there for the ones that you have trouble with making the decision yourself and you use it. It seems the confusion is how, how often it's being used and, and of course how long it's taking and the lack of communication to the fans and I think that that is something that you have to work through. It's certainly um, in its infancy is uh, it's pulling up a lot of problems that they probably didn't expect, but uh, more training with the referees and the communication for me uh, until it becomes more efficient. And how often do we need to use it, and how do we adapt as time goes by to make it more and more efficient so we're all comfortable with it? I think you you've had the similar thing in rugby when it first comes, similar thing in cricket. I think when it first got got in in terms of technology, so. I think it needs a lot more discussion before it's introduced to the Premier League and people are more familiar with it and it's brought up a lot of controversy which you didn't want to happen but maybe in its infancy we have to expect that and work our way through it but it's certainly a tool that is needed to be improved on in how we use it. Certainly there has to be information to the the, the fans on the pitch so th- that communication and, and and how we how we do that with the technology and the big screens that we have um, will make them feel more comfortable as well. In terms of your preparations this week, what impact is the weather having? Terrible. Um, we're unlikely to get on the pitch today because of the wind today. It's in its in its it's so fierce that we'd barely be able to keep the ball on on the floor in terms of you know we'd have to have somebody to put the finger on it. <laughs> to keep it still, like you mean, but uh, we have a small indoor area we'll work at, work at today, but it has been a, a bit of a problem, but it's the same for us all. You know, we've all suffered the weather this week, and we all, we've all got the, well, certainly from our point of view, we've got the an, uh, the rooms, the analysts, to give the right information to the players through through our, um, our screens, so they'll visually see what Burnley do, and what their strengths and weaknesses are and, and for tomorrow they have to take that information into the game and, and go and play the best. <coughs> players that you're going to have available or unavailable, what's the latest on Mangala? Oh, I think that uh, I think that his, his, his injury is um, going to be a bit more uh, lengthwise than first thought. I think that they've reassessed the, the scans and and they seen there's a little bit more damage than first expected, so I think it's highly unlikely we'd see him again this season. So uh, we're we're in the position at, um, as a football club that Manchester City wants us to rehabilitate him. That's our position, so we will do that. Uh, Seamus Coleman's back, Leighton Baines is back in the squad. Um, Phil Jagielka's started training yesterday as well, so there's a few players back. That's important to us. Yeah. Uh, no, not at the moment. I think he's he's still he's training, but you know, uh, at the moment with uh, Phil Jagielka, Mason Olgate, uh, Michael Kenny, and Ashley Williams, central defenders wise, he can perhaps do a bit more training, another under twenty three game, and then see where we go from there. Just check it on. What's the plan for David Clapton? Obviously, not involved for the first team at the moment, but also not getting engaged with him under twenty three. Well, he does. He does spasmodically. I mean, I think with David Class, and we give him a game uh, just just every now and again. And obviously, he trains with the first team squad every day. Um, when, when we're training, he, he trains. It's a bit dejecting for a player of that, of, 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 or any player that finds himself in this position. But as I said before, the, the window we reduced the squad dramatically. Like I mean, it was it's down to about three or four now, whereas. Before the end of the window, I was it was eight or nine or seven, eight or nine players who weren't involved in the in the t- the, s- the squad or the preparation for the games because they were 
we were overloaded with with players, you know, and um, and I think that we've reduced that somewhat, but we still have a few players that are very frustrated. Sam, you've obviously seen speculation about your own future. <laughs> How confident what a shock! <laughs> um, I think I've answered this question many times, particularly the lads, the press lads. I'm here as long as as long as I win football matches, and if you don't win football matches, don't matter how long your contract is, uh, you lose your job. If you win football matches, you keep you, you keep your job. You can plan the future of the football club. So. At the moment, we're in a very good position, and uh, uh, I quite I, I slightly su surprised about the speculation. But um, you can look at uh, the two differences between us at the moment, and the two differences are not good enough away from home, but good enough at home. And uh, on where we started, um, down in the the bottom end, everybody talking about relegation to where we are now. You know, Burnley's magnificent season that they're having means that if we beat them, we're level with them on points on Saturday. So that that's the realistic view from my point of view. With all the other speculation, you know, will go on. It happens. And uh, and for me, the waveform is a long-standing problem at the club. It's not uh, a problem that hasn't been or has only arrived with my tender. It's been an, under Ronald and under Roberto before I got here. So... You know, it's not a, it's not something that we want or something that I particularly want, and it is something that I have to remedy. But uh, it is a long-standing problem, like you know. So, 2017 was only two games won. You know, 2016-17 in total was only seven games in two in two years. So, it's been there for a while, and my job is to sort that. Is to sort the away results out, which we were obviously very close to a result at at, um, at Watford. We made one slip up and it cost us a point. Is it purely results out, Sam? Because other arguments are put forward. About what? Bring up style of play. Well, what, is the, well, what is the style of play? Well, you know, well, the sti style of play is only brought up by, by previous... Um, by previous people making out from many, many years ago that we were playing this type of football, which has gone past 10 years ago now. So style of football for me is about um, a team going on the pitch and playing to its best to win a game of football, which, which with what style suits the players. Now, within that, within that system... And uh, within the way that they play, their responsibility is to perform to their highest level. And if that doesn't happen, then you have to look at changes by team selection or changes the shape of the team. So style of play has never really been an issue, apart from the previous legacy that was that was laid upon my uh, my name, if you like, like you I mean, but. Uh, you know, style of play for me is about getting out there with 11 players, about showing the commitment to the football club and about going out and performing better than the opposition and uh, and coming off the field with with a result and hopefully a win. That's the point I'm wondering, is it unfair because you were brought in... But it's, always, it's, never gonna, it's never going to change, so I don't know why people... Well, people will always probably go on about it, like, I mean, but people speculate out of... Uh, com no complete information at all, which is what the game is all about. And it, you know, somebody whispers somewhere else, and the fish used to be this big, and by the time the end of the day, it's that size, isn't it? You know what I mean? So, uh, and the exaggeration comes in, and uh, and you have to live with that in my position. So, you know, this is my seventh Premier League club, and the ups and downs have been speculated. And, all seven clubs that I've been at, whichever club it is, and my job is to focus only on the players at the football club and making sure they do the best they possibly can, and and that's my, what my life is, and that's why I, I enjoy this life because the the young players that you work with, you want to see them get better and achieve more. I'm looking at Burnley just to make up the job that Sean Dyche has done there. Fabulous! I think that uh, top four at one stage and looking. 
looking almost like he may sustain it a little bit longer than he has, like you I mean. So I think that very well organised and um, you know difficult to beat. I think that is certainly the case, particularly particularly on their own patch, like you I mean. I think that. Uh, they, they, they perhaps not score that many, but they certainly don't concede many. So I think, as ever, it'd be a very, very tough, very tough game. I think that from our point of view, they've struggled to win games recently. So, uh, so like I said, there's an opportunity for us to go and play better than we did at Watford. I think that's an absolute necessity for tomorrow, and. Uh, be good enough when you're defending correctly and don't slip up like we did last week. In all fairness, last week it was the 76th minute before Watford scored and the shot had a shot on target, so we we nearly got that right. But at the other end, we're certainly not clinical enough when we get in the in the final third, and and we have to improve on that. I think we entered the box, the penalty box, 36 times at, um, against Watford, which was more than them against us, and. And unfortunately, that conversion rate wasn't good enough. Seven shots and only two on target. So that's where we need to prove it. One, we haven't had a clean sheet for a long time. And two, away from home, our, our shots on goal and our shots on target tallying our goals are, are far too low. And as you look to make that improvement, is the rest of the season part of the planning for next season as well? And what further conversations do you have with the players? Well, yes, I mean, there's a lot of planning needs to be going on, but I mean, our main aim is to secure the Premier League mathematical status of the club and uh, with with 10 games to go, who knows where we're going to finish? You know, where, where will we finish? Will we have a run of games like our first come in and have a period where we continue to win matches and or go undefeated and, and, and finish in a... In a a very very good position considering where we come from or do we do we stay in around where we are or do we continue to struggle away from home which then that adds more pressure onto our own results then which is what we've got to try and avoid starting tomorrow just one quick one just if i can say james mccarthy uh, update just uh, light nearer at the end of the tunnel well that'll be next season for, for james you know what i mean i think that there's a long process because of the um Compound fracture and the the bones came through the socks. I'd, the wounds haven't even healed correctly yet, but he is walking, but unaided at the moment. So that's a good sign. Um, but he starts his long rehab as as did Seamus Coleman uh, when he had the similar a similar injury. So no day yet, really. Then never put a day on something like that or something in 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 the long term as that. You know, what I mean personally. Um, even though physios and doctors do it, I don't think you should ever put a time on anybody's injury because each individual has a different healing process, so some heal quicker than others. And just as far as Funes Mori is concerned, obviously he's been called up to the Argentina squad there as well, so how will that work? Do you liaise with them? Will he go away? Or Yeah, as he, as he fit enough, I'm sure want to go. The game will do him good as well if he plays. So we can obviously get some feedback on that and obviously we can record the game and watch it and see, see how he does so it'd be, it'd be very good from our point of view and that's from his point of view getting called up Sam in terms of expectations of you from, from Farhad Mashiri and so on is there do you feel increasing pressure on you to finish the season in style or is there a general understanding that it's going to take time for, for any manager to turn Everton into a real force in the Premier League uh I think that uh, I think that we'd all want we'd all want to get into a position of safety in the Premier League first as quick as we possibly can, and I think that we haven't achieved recently away from home the sort of results that we wanted to to bring us more points. I think that you know I think that that the losses are the big problem. If we'd have just drawn away from home, you respect the points, and it keeps the keeps the points total ta you know totaling up and. Uh, it stops the pressure coming on you and on the players, I think. But, you know, when you don't win football matches, pressure comes on you and you've got to live with the pressure. The, and the players have to live with the pressure. The, you know, they've put massive, a bit more pressure on themselves than they need to, if, you know, because we've got two away games, you know, starting with a point at Watford and then going into Burnley. You know, and I can still say that, you know, whatever we do, you know, come Monday changes the speculation or changes the season. If we win... Everything eases off. If we don't win, more pressure comes on us all, me included, more than me than anybody else, because I'm the manager, I'm responsible for it. So, 
you know, you live with it. You know, what you have to do is you have to not let anybody detract you from what you want to do and uh, and how you want to do it because your beliefs and sticking to your beliefs are the most important thing if you're going to be a manager for any period of time. So I learned that at, uh, in a young age when I was coming through the ranks and, you know, stayed with me about the clear focus that you need to keep going forward. Do you feel, Sam, that Everton is a big club? Obviously, you've dealt with pressure in all sorts of di different situations. Is there a particular pressure at a club like this where fans expect success? I think it's the same as Newcastle and the same as West Ham. You know, but at Everton, they've won a lot more in recent years, you know, or past years. Uh, but they, they have this big expectation at West Ham and as at Newcastle, as they do as they do at Everton, you know. I think that, uh, you, know, the, you know, they're achieving, I mean, Newcastle's 52,000 fans that want, want to see the team win things. And uh, West Ham are now 48, 50 odd thousand fans that want to see the club win things, and Everton's the same. They want to see the club do better. The recent history s says Everton's done a lot more, and you've got to try and build a team that can uh, to try and get some success back. And you know that would be at the moment, this moment in time, that would be try to obviously first of all write this season off by getting safe and then rebuilding for next season to make sure you're in a better position to compete for something that you could possibly achieve which would be in the end sooner rather than later European football again uh, or a cup final I don't think there's any you know any doubt that that's the sort of ambition that we have to go for but this season you know it's I've only been here a couple of months or three months and uh, there's a lot of uh, difficulties that you have to go through and the, one of the biggest difficulties is 38 pros that's one of my that's been one of my difficult pr things to deal with on a day-to-day -day basis we managed to reduce that somewhat by getting I think 14 players out on loan now so we can then work with the players on a more regular basis try and keep them fit and try and improve them okay guys Thank you. Thanks, Tom. Cheers, Tom.